Goodness. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Um, really? When we're intimate like this, I, I, you can come forward. It's, it's just fine. Um, if anybody would like to bold, make a bold move on behalf of the Lord and make a true statement of faith, you can move forward about two or three or four rows. It's just fine. Um, Okie dokie, really. Okay. All right. Well, um, then I hope everyone's comfortable here and here. Welcome. Good morning to Trinity Sunday, one of the most important Sundays of the Christian year. This is the bull morning electronic or in print, one of the most famous icons in the world. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Friends, um, I'd like to dedicate the service today and I'd like to dedicate the message today to our dear friend and my colleague and brother, Deacon Mike Williams, for these past several weeks. That's why he's not here. He's going to be just fine. Um, had to take some tests at hospital time, but I miss my colleague when he's not here. And so let's dedicate the service today, shall we, to Mike and his ministry. He was ordained in the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of a storm, uh, got a, a battlefield commission, and uh, he's been serving you so faithfully every week since. He's the one that oversaw over 30,000 meals being delivered to quarantined households in the midst of the pandemic, up until two weeks ago. Quite a ministry our deacon has. Let's remember him as our service continues. Being Trinity Sunday, these are the old ones and the good ones. Would you please do verses of our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Our service continues on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer, page 3 in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray now. Stay up. Keep up with Our first reading is from Proverbs, chapter 8, 1 through 4, and 22 through 31. Does not wisdom ending raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out. To you, O people, I call and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work and the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth in fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to like a master worker, and I was daily his delight. 
rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor. Your majesty is raised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. To quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers. The moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and ox the air, the fish of the sea. And whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor. How exalted is your name in all the world. Our second reading is Romans 5, 1 through 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, please stand and join us on page five. You have to pay attention now. It flips to page six. And um, another big, fun Trinity Sunday hymn. Let's do the first two verses together. Friends, this is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will... Please be seated if you would. Going to need your help today, friends. We're going to take you back to uh, Tampa Jesuit High School. There's a, um, my, my 40th reunion uh, of uh, Tampa Jesuit High School class of uh, 1982. And uh, I, I, I didn't go. They don't like the Protestants to sneak in. Um, but I, I have a confession to make. Um, being uh, Episcopalian and of Scottish descent in South Tampa growing up was not the majority position uh, of, of life. Tampa Jesuit uh, features uh, primarily a Cuban-American population or just a Cuban population. 
uh, and uh, a very Roman Catholic population. So I was not the most popular kid. This shocks you, I know. Uh, I ran track and cost country, which furthered my social uh, isolation. And um, I got to be president of one thing in my four-year career at Tampa Jesuit High School for extra bonus points, if you know me. Can, can anybody guess what's the one student club that I got to be president of? Debate. debate. No, they didn't have a debate team at Jesuit. The Jesuit brothers didn't like that so much. Um, they like to kind of just say it and let it lie. Um, but thank you. Uh, thank you. Some, any, anybody else? Th this, this secured my popularity with women. Um, anyone? Anything says social isolation. Like being the guy that stands up to me today. Um, anyway, I wanted to throw down a little Latin with you this morning and wonder if you could help me here on Trinity Sunday. It's a good Sunday for that. Um, let's, let's go back to uh, our cradle Episcopalians in the room. How many Christian creeds, you don't even have to be Episcopalian for this, how many Christian creeds are there in the Book of Common Prayer, or just historically? How many creeds, you know those statements of Christian faith, ancient? Two. Would anybody name the first one? The Apostles' Creed. The creed we use for baptisms and confirmations, for ordinations. Uh, what's the second one? The Nicene Creed, the creed we're about to say here in, in just a moment. Uh, the creed that uh, all Christians, except for one small set, can say. Um, great. Is that your final answer? There are three in prayer. The third one is printed all the way back on page 864. And I know when you read the prayer book at home, you know, in the back, um, this creed is called the Quincunque Volt, super popular at parties. Whip this out at Beaver Creek here uh, or on the golf course. Uh, it's called the Creed of St. Athanasius. And the Creed of St. Athanasius in the sixth century said the Catholic faith is precisely this, that we worship one God in Trinity, Trinity in unity, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, such is the Father. Okay, there's your third creed in the Book of Common Prayer. Actually, it's a pretty important creed. When you have your Christian friends talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And let me just cue the Episcopalians into something. Um, when someone asks you, Evangel when did you turn your life to Jesus? I was born. And I've been understanding what that means ever since. That really is not a bad answer. And Jesus... He is our Lord and Savior. He is the person I speak to every morning, and I listen for his voice. Oh, it's beautiful. But we are not Unitarian Christians. Don't let anybody in a local Bible study or on the golf course tell you otherwise. We are not Unitarian. We are Trinitarian Christians. We baptize. We bless. We bury. We marry at the ER, at Vail Health, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is our way of speaking about God. It's not some dusty doctrine. It's how we experience God. The Creed of St. Athanasius calls the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit several things, in creatus. Anybody want to take a Latin stab at that? In creatus. In creatus. You hear created in there, but there's a modifier in the front, a prepositional modifier. Uncreated. God ain't like you and I. God doesn't have a start date 
or a shelf life. What makes God God is that God stands before time itself was created. Albert Einstein very helpfully told us that light is constant, the speed of light. It's time and that Christians from earliest days proclaimed God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uncreated, ungenerated. Where did God come from? This is what we teach children in our Sunday school. Haven't you ever talked about this? Where did God come from? Uncreated. The second Latin word that the creed of St. Athanasius calls God, immensus. Immensus. Anybody want to take a stab at that? Careful. It's not how it comes into the English. L for love, Latin club president. Immensus. Limitless. Without horizon. The James Webb Telescope, the most sophisticated scientific platform ever produced by our species, is scheduled to send the first color picture back of the deepest recesses of space on what date? Everybody should know in this church. This isn't theology. This is NASA. Don't you check the NASA website every day? What date are we going to see the oldest light ever that's ever seen by human eyes, by the most sophisticated July 12th, put it on your calendar. It's not just that the New York Phil is gonna be here, we're gonna see the oldest light we've ever seen on July 12th from the James Webb Telescope. About the same time the avalanche are hoisting the Stanley Cup, spitting in the face of everyone from Tampa, Florida. Um, God saw that light created that light, and it went past him. In fact, if we created another James Webb telescope from where that light came from and looked even further, God's already seen it. We postulate an ever-expanding universe, and Christian poets and theologians and artists and musicians say that God created the space where the universe is without horizon. This comforts me when I go to bed at night, wondering how the world's going to work out. God is eternus, the creed says. What's the uh, English word? Eternal. God is eternal. The Bible says that Jesus is the today and forever. And I'm learning something about this God, this triune God. No matter which person to whom I pray, the Father, the Son, or the Spirit, this person of God is the only person that's ever kept, every, that God ever made or anybody ever made to me. God's the only one to keep his promises completely and fully. That's one of the main reasons I'm a believer today at the age of 57. God is eternal. God is forever. God has our past. God has our future, which means God has our present as well. Here's one that everybody seems to know and everybody seems to forget. God is Omnipotence, omnipotence. Omnipotence. Is the President of the United States omnipotence? Is this President omnipotent? Was he? Oh, please, I'm not asking a rhetorical question. Was he? No. Is the Supreme Court of the United States omnipotence? The Congress? <laughs> Wait, what? just give me a minute. Okay. The World Court of The Hague? Anybody that wants to invade Ukraine and blow the country up? Omnipotence? Christians better get this right. 
None of those people know what to do when you hit the ER. Not one. None of those people are generally who we call in the minutes before we lose consciousness and die or are scared out of our wits or have a moment of joy so profound that electricity shoots through our body from our toes to the scalp of our head. God is all powerful all the time. This is the try. I've had the privilege three times this week of praying for people medically who didn't know last Sunday they needed that prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we called upon God as the great physician to give the physicians doing the work here the knowledge and the skill that they needed to heal the person for whom we were praying. We pray for people in power. We pray to the person who is ultimate power probably a good time to remember that in our world. Those are the four characteristics of God in the creed, but I'd like you to look at the cover of your bulletin to see the last one. And yes, friends, we can go off the page of the creed of St. Athanasius to introduce you to the fifth dimension of God. In Latin, Several words apply. Perspicuum, vulnerable. Everybody look at one of the greatest icons ever written. We don't say icons are painted in the Orthodox tradition. They're written. This icon was written by a 15th century Russian master whose name is Andrei Rublev. The title of the men that visit Abraham and and, uh, Sarah Do anybody remember from Genesis and predict that Sarah in her older Isaac in English, it means he laughs or laughter. The technical name is the hospitality of Abraham. Many Christians around the world see this icon as a visual pictorial representation of the Trinity. Everybody see God at the head of the table? Honestly laid on the table inviting people to the middle. Everybody see the two in dialogue. Who's sitting at the fourth edge of that square table, please? Who's at the fourth edge in front of you on the picture? There must be somebody on the fourth edge. The table has to be filled, right? Who's sitting in front of you blocking your view? Nobody. The fourth seat on the fourth edge of the table is for you. Rubloff masterfully invites you into the frame, into the conversation, to take your place at the table. This is an icon of profound invitation. All those Latin words I just read are about being invited The Trinity is our experience of God reaching out to us as Father, as Creator, as Son, as Redeemer, as the Holy Spirit who dignifies how we live. This is the God who we know. This is the God who we worship. This is the God who we proclaim. And the church chooses this Sunday to anchor the whole second half of the Christian year. So friends, as our service continues, make no mistake and accept no substitute. Increatus, immensus, eternus, omnipotens, perspicuum, benevolum. Happy Trinity. Please take your seat at the table. Amen.
Let us all stand for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one, holy. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets of generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. He said the blessing and broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming to the text of your bulletin. Quite an accomplishment. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praise his Father through Jesus Christ and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, 
who art in heaven. <coughs> on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you uh, lift this hold that up for me? Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with great thanksgiving. As Christians, regardless of denomination or how long it's been, are welcome and we encourage you to receive now the bread. And just ask me for one when you come forward. Uh, why don't, if you could just form a, a single line today, that would be in, in tinct or dip it just gently, uh, your bread into the wine, uh, just like so. We have Karen Baird, just right over here in the North Chapel, serving us as a prayer team member. If you have a prayer for yourself or for someone else, she'd be very happy to pray with you after you receive.
Friends, would you join me as we say thank you to the Lord together? Page 13 of your bulletin or 365 in your book of common prayer. Shall we pray together? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May the peace of God, which truly passes all human understanding, be in your hearts and minds to know the nod and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Just want to ask if you, we have birthdays or wedding anniversaries today. Does Anne have a birthday? Does Pharaoh have birthdays? Anniversary. Anniversary. Well, stand up, you guys. Tell us. Everybody meet the McLeans, Chai and Pharaoh. How many years, you guys? 52. 52 years. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, lucky man. Okay, yes, uh, and Anne, do you have a birthday? Okay, this is our dear sister Anne Cuny celebrating a birthday. And stand up, you can stand up too. We can stand up. Uh, Farrell, stand up to Chai, uh, 52. You earned it. Um, the Lord be with you. Lord, for the gift of life for Anne this morning, pour out your Holy Spirit upon her health and peace and joy in the coming year. And for Chai and Farrell's anniversary, 52 years, we're so grateful. Turn their hearts ever closer to each other as husband and wife. Bless them on their anniversary and all of them, Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy anniversary, you guys. And happy birthday. Fantastic. Great. Okay, you guys, you missed the beach. Last week, we had a little outing. We're going to be doing some fun things this summer. That means Christians get together and laugh, make jokes, share food and drink, and relax together, okay? We're out of practice. Things are edgy. So we're going to have some fun and push back. I played old man bocce ball on the beach at Nottingham Lake. We had a wonderful time. Dan Smith last Sunday cleaned house on bocce. He destroyed all the kids and walked away laughing about it. So very sensitive gathering there by the lake. We had a great time. Um, we'll do it again. Um, friends, we do have our Metamorphosis Bible study in person this morning at the Edwards Chapel. We're studying the book of Acts. It's a great study. Text me if you'd like a link. We have a Zoom hybrid as usual uh, this week. The 10 a.m. Wednesday group are meeting in my home at the rectory, and it's comfortable. Would love to have you join us. That's 10 a.m. in the Wednesday morning. Um, I want to let you know that uh, we have a big week. We have this week. June 21st, solstice. Here at the Vale Chapel, we're going to Brown. Some of you may remember Ernie and Joe Brown. Ernie owned the hardware store. Um, Ernie raised three kids, and then he and Joe took uh, a custody of three pre-adolescent grandchildren and raised them also. He's an extraordinary man, one of the greatest generation, and a key patriarch of this church. So we're going to be memorializing Ernie Brown on June 21st. A few days later, another patriarch, our dear brother from Texas, seasonal member, supporter, and a wise counselor to me. Uh, both large families will be with us. That's Friday, June 24th at 1030 in the morning here at the Vale Chapel. We threw in a vestry meeting, a board meeting, for good measure that week just because we just can't get together enough. So it's going to be a big week, that third week of June. And I'd love to, uh, uh, the families don't know who's going to come, and I, and I told them that our church does show up. Please come help us celebrate these great men. On July 3rd, Sunday, I'm going to take that opportunity to give you a, a kind of a, a state uh, a, a company report, a state of the parish update. There's a whole lot going on right now in our church. I'm interviewing, for instance, candidates to be our next vicar 
or associate priest. We have two superior candidates. They both happen to be female that we are interviewing right now. We had a wonderful site visit last week with one of them. She only made one critical error in the entire excellent interview process. She confused Star Trek and Star Wars in conversation with me. This was a mistake, but she recovered well, and she can, uh, which uh, everyone, no one's perfect. Uh, uh, I'm sure she's studying up right now. Uh, but anyway, maybe on July 3rd, we'll have some uh, reports for you about that. Um, July 4th, here's a big reveal. Stay with me. We are not having pancakes on the morning of July. We are engaged in a major phase three reconstruction, refurbishment of this building, and neither the kitchen downstairs nor the uh, parish hall downstairs will be open. There's nowhere to seat people and there's nowhere to cook the pancakes. We're concerned that our mobile kitchen will be deployed uh, serving firefighters. Instead, we're gonna kick to what Episcopalians uh, do very well at eight o'clock in the morning, which is donuts to start. Stay with me. We're gonna have donuts and coffee here at eight o'clock. You bring your chairs. We're gonna reserve that corner right here uh, at this intersection, the first bank corner where the trees are. All those landscapers don't know that we call that garden seating for the Vale Chapel. So you bring your chairs. Chairs up, donuts and coffee, and at 9 o'clock, we're going to have a beautiful interfaith independent service right in this chapel. It's one of the best services of the year. 9 o'clock, interfaith service in here. We walk out, we're going to have breakfast burritos for you as you leave. Not for the entire town of Vail. Breakfast burritos out. You can take protein and anything else you bring out to the parade, and we're all going to sit and have fun together on the corner. Garden seating. Everybody with me? That's July 4th. After the parade, you're on your own. You get home however you can. That, that just, but, but that's the morning. Yes, ma'am. Are the donuts and coffee open to the public? Donuts and coffee are open to the public. Breakfast burritos for you guys. The next Sunday, July 10th, we're going to do an old-fashioned hymn sing. If anybody has a hymn that you would like to hear sung, that we could sing with you and for you, please email or text me. I'd love to put your hymn in. Finally, friends, um, an announcement I was not expecting, uh, but it's important. Um, I need to announce that Gina Parrish, our youth minister, has decided to step down from being our youth minister. Gina and Matthew are local members uh, of this church. Gina was born and raised here. Um, we decided, all of our staff, get about three months to try on a, a ministry. We're at the end of that period, and Gina said, I love this church, I love ministering, I love serving. I don't think I'm called to be your youth minister right now. And I said, okay, and I'd like you to say okay too. They're not moving, they're not leaving, she's totally healthy, everything's fine. She's got a ministry, it's just not youth ministry. So we will be saying goodbye to Gina as a youth minister, What's my question then? There is going to be a staff opening for a new youth minister. I will tell you, it's one of the hardest ministries in the valley to reach out, get to know our young people, speak through the chaos of their lives right now. If you know someone that you think, regardless of age, would be a candidate to be our part-time youth minister, I would love to uh, about that and look around as you're in the valley these next few weeks. I would deeply appreciate that. And Gina, and to be very strong members of our church. What's going on in the church right now? There's more, but not for now. Thank you so much. Do we have Ned coffee downstairs this morning? We do have coffee. And if you would like to see everything that's happening outside, we're re-engineering the entire outside of this chapel Please downstairs, I'd love to see you. Would you please stand? But your worship of the Trinity begins again right now. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.